lift your hearts up to the We take our readings from the book Rays of the One Light, <clears throat> weekly commentaries on the Bible and the Bhagavad Gita by Swami Kriyananda. This week's topic is to each according to his faith. Truth is one and eternal. Realize oneness with it in your deathless self within. The following commentary is based on the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. In the Gospel of St. John, chapter 3, we read, Everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. It is a common experience shared by most people that when a person errs, his, he experiences a desire to hide that error from his conscience instead of holding it up for purification. <clears throat> error clutches its misdeeds to itself and resists correction, though it is only in the state of purity that we can achieve perfect freedom. It requires an act of will to offer that awareness up to the light and to hold it there until one's inner darkness is completely dissipated. For every state of consciousness has its own attractive power. <clears throat> and the more we allow that attraction to act upon us, the more we attract to ourselves the objective circumstances and experiences natural to it. Our faith is the attractive power of our underlying state of consciousness. Goodness attracts goodness. It takes goodness even to see goodness. Evil attracts evil and it takes evil even to see evil, that is, to take special note of its existence. Whatever there is in you of darkness or light, offer it up to the heights. In the supreme light alone will we find salvation. Accept nothing less in yourself as your lasting reality. As the Bhagavad Gita says in the 12th chapter, cling thou to me, clasp me with heart and mind, so shalt thou dwell surely with me on high. And if thy thought droops from such heights, if thou beest weak to set body and soul upon me constantly, despair not, give me lower service, seek to reach me, worshiping with steadfast will. And if thou canst not worship steadfastly, work for me. Toil in works pleasing to me. For he that laboreth right for love of me shall finally attain. And if, but if in this thy faint heart fails, bring me thy failure. Thus, through Holy Scripture, God has spoken to mankind. Oh, 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 oh. Lorna, 
Lorna. This is Varti Mohavani and Vajra. Can you turn her off, please? And all of you. Hello. <laughs> We're all here together. The oratorio was amazing last night. If you missed it, I'm very sorry. But show up next year. <laughs> we do it once a year. We had 10 singers from Seattle join us. We had the rafters vibrating with the beautiful, beautiful music. Um, it is the music of truth. That whole um, oratorio starts out with a couple uh, musical pieces, instrumental pieces. But the first words that are sung are, children of God, your time of trial has ended. And from there, it just gets better. Because it's not just a story about Christ's life. It's not us over here and Jesus Christ over there, and we're telling the story of this magnificent drama and how an avatar lives and dies and comes alive again. It's all about how that's our story and our reality, and there's no separation between the two. There's, um, there's another song, I am thine, thou art mine, hand in hand forever. You can teach, take each one of these songs of that whole oratorio and meditate on it for a long time. Christ is risen this Easter morn, thus our lives to joy are born. He from death is ever free, and in his life even so are we. We're part of that story, and it's, it's what's so thrilling and so alive and so absolutely um, beautiful about that whole experience of singing those words, listening to those words, being in that vibration. The very foundation of this building is different now because that vibration just um, touches everything and permeates everything. And when you, when you meet life on the highest octave that you can in the life of a, of a guru, of an avatar, in the inspiring words that came through Swami Kriyananda, a great soul who was in perfect attunement with that light, then, um, then you, you live on that light. You doeth truth. I love that line. You doeth truth. The, um, the Bible reading this morning, it says, but he that doeth truth come into the light. Doing truth means living that light that truth, being that truth, not just talking about it or um, thinking that it's a really cool idea, but doing, doing the truth. And that's what we were doing last night. We were doing truth together. And, um, and that's what we do when we come together here. Um, when we don't live in that truth, which I know is often, <laughs> when we don't live in that truth, we do have a tendency to want to hide it. When we make a mistake, when we, when we fall from that level um, and, and we realize that um, we, we, we did wrong or we got caught or we, um, however you want to say it, we made a mistake and it's not, um, it's not true, then it's painful. It hurts. It can be like a physical pain. It can be a psychic, a spiritual pain because we're out of alignment with that. And so um, what do you want pain to do? You want it to go away. So you just you try to bury it. You try to put it aside. You try not to bring it out into that light. But um, what this reading is telling us is when, when we live in that truth, when we turn toward that light, when we offer everything into that light, then we realize, it says, um, cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest not to show them off, not to say, look what I did, I did this great thing, but to manifest that light, to manifest the truth. And then we all realize they are wrought in God, that it's, it's all God. When you bring 
when you bring those things that aren't true, when you bring those mistakes and you bring those things that are so painful and you actually take them out and hold them up to that light, all that happens is that they turn into light. All that happens is they disappear and you realize it's all God. It's all God. It's all God making the mistakes. It's all God doing the right thing. It's all God. And they're wrought in God. They were made in God. And they're, they're, they're made in that light. And it's just, just an illusion. It's just a, um, a um, shadow that's there that makes it look different than that. And it's, um, it's hard. <laughs> it's, not like, it's hard. It's hard to do. But, and, and then there's a, a, a line. We, oh, we also don't want to bring out and parade all our, our mistakes in front of other people and just constantly work on, that's me. You, you all have known people who, are, um, who just pay too much attention to the mistakes that they make and the things that go wrong. And, and so their whole consciousness is about their mistakes. Like, oh, yeah, that was me again. Yeah, you know, I'd never do that right. Oh, I never get that right. And... And so the focus and the consciousness is on those mistakes, is on the things that are wrong. It's on the things that are in that shadow. And what is this reading tells us? To each according to his faith. What comes to us? Well, what comes to us is what reflects our faith. And faith is not, we're not talking about just faith in God, the faith of, you know, going to church and, and my faith in Jesus or my faith in these masters. I'm, your faith is, your under, is the underlying reality. The faith is where you put your energy, where you put your consciousness. Where's your faith? It could be your faith in your bank account. It could be your faith in your own little talents, you know? It could be your faith in anything. And where, where, our, where we put our faith that's what comes back to us. That's what manifests in our life, is the, the outward circumstances, the, um, the, the, um, the little mundane things from, from everyday small stuff to big stuff. What comes back to each according to his faith. And that's what all of the scriptures say. It's, it's all in agreement, no matter what path you're on. You know, where do you put your faith? And then that's what comes back to you. Now, we also have to remember that we have karma. We have this lifetime isn't the only part of the story. There's a long story. So a lot of times things come to us that we don't know where they came from. <laughs> we don't understand. Um, but it was energy that was put out that is now coming back. And our job now is to try to meet it with as high an octave as we can with as much light, with as much faith in a greater reality that we can, which will, again, will attract more. If our karma comes to us and we try to meet it up here, then what we'll be attracting is more on that level. And, and it's, a, it's a daily, it's a daily battle. It's, it's not an easy thing to do. But this music, this oratorio music, um, the story that's told and the, um, the vibration that we all shared last night, everybody walked out of here knowing that that was true and that that was real and that we have that common reality that we share. And we're singing about an avatar, a life of thousands of years ago. And yet that reality of his life and his example of how to live in that light is just as real now as it is today, as, as real then as it is today. It's, um, it's just amazing. And then this Bhagavad Gita reading, this is my favorite one. Of course, every week when I get out the reading, I think, oh, this is my favorite one. <laughs> but this one is really, truly my favorite one. <laughs> this is... This is the sweetest, the most inspiring, the most reassuring, the kindest, the greatest message that we can get that comes through the scriptures that says, no matter what we do, where we stand, how we mess up, the mistakes we make, 
the wrong thinkings that we have, no matter what they are, where we are, there's always a way to turn toward the light. Always. And there's nothing, nothing in here that says you're condemned, that you can't turn around, that you can't make it better. Nothing. It says all of these. If you can't do it constantly, clasp me with heart and mind. So shalt thou dwell surely with me on high. That's where Christ was. But if thy thought droops from such height, if thou beest weak to set body and soul upon me constantly, despair not. Give me service. Find a way. Find a way to serve. Find a way to put your energy in that direction. If you can't keep your consciousness there all the time, and we all can sometimes, we all can do it sometimes, but if we can't do it all the time, then when, when we get knocked down to a lower level by life and by our habits and by our karma, then find some way to do it. Put your service, put your energy, put your direction toward that light in whatever way you can. And then, seek to reach me, worshiping with steadfast will. But if you can't worship steadfastly, which means constantly persevering, keeping it on that level all the time, if you get knocked down even more, work for me, toil and works pleasing to me. See, that's different than service. Service is a conscious choice. Service is saying, I'm doing this for God and I'm doing it with joy, and I'm doing it because I know this will take me to the light. If you're not there, if you're not on that level, then just work. Just move energy. Just work and toil. Do it hard. Just don't give up. He that laboreth right for love of me shall finally attain. And if you can't even do that, if you can't do that, and there are times when all of us get to that. We can't even do that. The thought of working, serving, putting out more energy is just too much. Then bring God your failure because that's God too. There's nowhere that we can be that's outside of that reality. Nowhere we can stand that's separate. There's nowhere we can go. There's no mistake we can make that brings us apart from that reality. It's all there. It's all in that star. It's all part of that. So we have to just keep reminding ourselves, bring God your failure. Even when you're feeling lousy, come to service. <laughs> come to serve. Bring in this. You are, there are so many people who will tell me that they didn't come to an event. They didn't come to service. They didn't come to Ananda. They didn't come. They didn't go outside to see their friends. They didn't, because they were off, because they felt bad, because, oh, I don't want to bring anybody else down. I don't want to affect anyone else. I just thought it was better if I hide my light and I just stay in the darkness. And it's just our ego, it's just delusion, it's just we get confused. The reality is, if you're down here, you need to try to turn back toward that light. Hang around with devotees. Come to this amazing temple. Serve together. Do anything that will bring your heart and mind back to that reality where you say, oh yeah, that's what's real. That other stuff, that was, that's it's just, I don't know what that was, but it wasn't real. This is what's real. Bring yourself back to that. And then what about, you know, our, our number one job of devotees? which is fixing those other people that are off balance. <laughs> I hope you know I'm kidding about that. <laughs> it seems to preoccupy our minds a lot, you know? How to, how to fix those other people. There was a wonderful song in the oratorio last night that I had the privilege of singing. And... Um, it's about Christ, of course, and 
and his approach. It says, to souls that were fallen. Now that's an interesting word, fallen. In the Western Christian tradition, we have a tendency, there tends to be a sort of definition of that, where you, you're, you're fallen, meaning you know, you're going to hell. You're either up here with Jesus, or you're way down there, um, forever condemned, and that's fallen. But actually, it's a very interesting concept. It's a very yogic word, fallen. Because what do we talk? We talk about rising up through the chakras. We talk about the energy moving higher and higher and being inspired, being uplifted. It's, a, it's, it's how we're made. It's a very basic um, principle of yoga and of, of reality and how we're created. Energy moves upward and we want to try to get it all up here. And so when you're fallen, all it means is that the energy is lower. So I can be, you know, way up here and uplifted because of the oratorio last night. And, and something may happen today where I'm fallen. That energy falls, comes down a notch. So it can fall way down, you know, it can fall a little bit down. But to souls that were fallen, it just means their energy is lower. Their reality is lower. It's at a lower place, and they're seeing things from a lower, a lower reality rather than up here. And so the song goes on to say, to souls that were fallen, he spoke of God's love. That's the only answer. That's how you, that's how you uplift that energy again. And the reminder in that song is that's, and in the Gita reading, that's all that's there is God's love. That doesn't change. That's constant. We can go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. But God's love is constant. Nothing, nothing ever changes that. No matter how many mistakes we make, no matter how fallen we are, God's love is there constantly. And the song goes on. He spoke of God's love and coaxed them with kindness to turn back again just to turn back to that light. And how do you get people to turn toward the light? With kindness. With being a channel for God's love that's constant. It's not by berating, condemning, by pushing them forward. It's just by kindness. Just by expressing God's love. Forsake, Jesus said, the fulfillments of earth for the comfort they bring you lasts hardly an hour. That's all being fallen means. It's just that your focus is on something that's temporary. It's just not going to last. And then we get really confused because we think, we think it was supposed to. We think it was supposed to give us happiness. We were counting on this to bring us where we wanted to go. And then it disappoints and it goes away and we say, well, Now what? You know, we just get disappointed and we get confused. And then we just have to turn back to that light and say, what's going on? Where do I need to go? Oh, that's right. I need to go there, back to the light. I need to doeth truth. We need to doeth truth. I'm going to read to you from Whispers. More truth. Number 122. O all-pervading spirit, the breeze of thy inspiration has removed every cloud from my heart. The firmament of my mind is now clear. Purified, I behold only thee everywhere. The sunshine of thy joy spreads rapidly to the farthest shores of my being. After long ages of hunger, I feed on thy light. By thy grace and by my constant wakefulness in thee, may this joy be mine forever, forever, and forever. Om. Amen. We have another beautiful song for you.
I was caught up in ecstasy. Twas a day sanctified by God. There he showed me the truths of heaven, truths which all seeking him should know, how the soul made to live in freedom can reclaim its eternal right. How the night, born of our delusions, can be fired, blazing with his love.